The tractors are ready to put in our 2020 rice crop. All right, let's work. It's the 2020 crop year. My name is Matthew Sliger. That's right, we're out in California planting rice by air. Welcome to the rice fields. Ride with me from planting to harvest. This is California Rice, my friends. You're watching Rice Farming TV. Yeah, the tractors are ready. We've changed both the fuel and oil filters, as well as changed the oil. This one is hooked up to a short disc that we'll use to fill in our drains, which push the winter water off of our rice fields. And speaking of the fields, they're totally dry. This north wind that's blowing right now has really helped push the water off and evaporate the standing water. There's the drains behind me right now. Oh yeah, and all our rice boxes are in good condition, either repaired or replaced. And the weeds on our levees are all burnt back so we can effectively ridge them or build them back up once spring tractor work starts. And speaking of the ridger, as you can see, it's hooked up to this K7240 ready for spring work. Yeah, tractors are ready, implements are ready. Although one thing, where's the water? This is a ditch behind me and it's got no water in it. Let me give you an update on the water situation, okay? First off, it hasn't rained. In February, our historical average is 8.2 inches. This February, we got zero inches of rainfall. Now water storage. Lake Oroville Dam, our water resource for this region is at 98% capacity. Like many other water storage sites around the North State, it's full. That's great. However, this comes at a cost. The snowpack up in the Sierra Nevadas that feeds Lake Oroville Dam is at about 60% of historical average, far below average. Now that snowpack has been melting during the month of February when we've been having this warm, warm, summer-like, spring-like temperatures coming through and has melted. That's why it's only at 60%, also because there hasn't been much snowfall. But that is one reason why the reservoirs are so full. They've been being fed by the snowpack. But what's really supposed to be happening is that snow up in the Sierra Nevadas is supposed to be being built upon right now in the winter months, not melting and feeding the reservoirs. It's supposed to melt during the summer. So we need more snow, we need more rain, and a lot of it. And it has to happen in March this month because we want to start breaking ground in April. That's when we need to get our crop in. Now the last two years, we were saved by March and April, had late starts the third week into April. That might happen again this year. That created a tight planting window for us. It stressed us out, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The tractors are ready, implements are ready, the fields are ready, although one thing, just the water is not ready. We need more rain, we need more snow. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna wait and hope it rains in March, a lot. But until then, I can answer some of your questions because I didn't get to it in the last episode because I lost my phone. Well, I'm having a bit of technical difficulty. Thanks for all your concern. Okay, nice to get out of the wind a little bit and into the shade. So, I've got my phone and I am going to answer your questions in order that I've most recently received them. So newest questions come first. Anyway, if you all have a question, go ahead and write it down in the comment section. I usually type out my answers anyway. I don't really do many of these FAQs, but because we have all the tractors and implements and the fields are ready and we're waiting on the rain, I might as well answer some questions, right? First comment comes from Rice Harvest 2018, how rice is harvested in Brazil. The Wizard Games writes, it is crazy how nice they are being. In the US, people would think it is big government or blackmailers. Now what he's referring to is because I just was down in Brazil and visited a farmer who I did not know uh, in the fields. Actually, if you speak farmer, and in this case I speak Portuguese as well because my wife's from Brazil, uh, very nice people. I mean, Brazilians are very friendly as it is and farmers, in my opinion, are pretty friendly. I have stopped by a corn farmer, I'll include that link in the description as well, who I did not know just down the block and popped into his combine. He knew me from my videos, but um, I don't know, I don't really have that experience of farmers being standoffish, at least not California farmers. So maybe 
some of you have some uh, thoughts on that. Next question comes from Klaus Lexion 8600 harvesting rice and the 2019 rice harvest link in the description. Hall and dirt I think is a rice farmer from Arkansas. Arkansas by the way is the largest rice producing state in the United States. He asked does anyone run auto steer on combines out there? We love it in Arkansas rice country. Great channel and love seeing the differences in Arkansas and California rice farming. Hall and dirt no. I'm not sure of any growers that use auto steer. I'm sure there are. I I'm totally sure there are. They're just in a different uh, class than I am. Okay, because we certainly don't run auto steer. Okay, this question comes from Jason Griffin. This is on the John Deere tractor and farm equipment tour. Link is in the description. That's when I visited my cousins and Uncle Jimmy. Oh wait, this isn't a question. It's more of a statement. Get ready for this. Jason says, John Deere are green because when a case pulls into the field the John Deere gets scared and goes and hides in the corn. So that's why a John Deere is green because it can be camouflaged in the green corn. Uh, Jason, interesting um, position. I don't know. What do you all feel out there? For me it doesn't matter. You know that we run green, red, and yellow. Sorry for the pronunciation on this. Mukthi. Mukthi K. She asks, on the new autonomous agriculture drone, my most popular episode in terms of views and most hated as well because I think I made the music on that one a little bit too loud. Link is in the description. Give me a listen. Tell me if that music bothered you as well. She asks about the drone. 15 minutes of battery life. How long does it take to charge? Would you not need three or four batteries and chargers ready? Yes, you would. On the scale of farming that we do out here, where we're farming 150 acres of rice, I mean, that's one field. We farm 1,200 acres, and an average size field is about 150 acres. If you had a pest management application being flown on with a drone that could only fly for 15 minutes, you would need several batteries, several charging stations to change them out because it would take a long time. I think, I can't really remember in that video, you guys will have to tell me when you watch it again. I think it was like 15 minutes and it could do like two acres maybe. So imagine that. One battery doing two acres for a 150 acre field. Not ideal. We need military grade stuff if we're going to start flying drones over fields. Uh, if it's anything but imaging of course. But uh, in terms of pest management applications, heavier payload, longer battery life, um, that's, that's what's needed. On Can You Hear That Ringing episode, I Believe Gaming just said hi. Hi. Rice Harvest 2018 in California begins with the sprint. Link is in the description. Dan Keller says, hey, enjoyed your rice harvest videos. I grew up on a wheat and corn farm, so I know ag, but know little about rice farming. I worked in Japan for 11 years and watched them harvest rice and became aware. Is there a question? Yes. I assume farmers grow both long and short grain rice. Is that true? In California, we grow mostly medium grain, Cal Rose medium grain. About, I don't know, high 90% of 500,000 acres of rice production is medium grain. So that remaining 2 to 5% is specialty Japanese short grain varieties. So you can find California short grain and California medium grain, which is also a premium product. Actually, if you're doing sushi, uh, traditionally in Japan you would use short grain, however virtually all sushi restaurants across the United States are using California medium grain. Now in terms of long grain, very, very, very little bit of long grain is grown in California, however a lot of long grain is grown in the southern rice producing states. We mentioned Arkansas being one of them, Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, and Missouri. They grow a lot. Uh, great question though, Dan. Okay. Next question, and it's going to be the last one for the episode because I got to go. So John Doe writes, a little late, but when I saw the Butte County line sign, aye, I'm from Yuba City. Where is your farm located if you don't mind me asking? Well, John, you did see a Butte County line sign in that video because we farm in Butte County. I'm originally from Gridley, population 6,000. Town motto is small town that loves company. We farm in the outskirts of Biggs and Richvale, even smaller rural towns than Gridley. And yeah, that's where we're from, Northern California. That's all about an hour north of Sacramento. That's it for this episode of Frequently Asked Questions, or 
most recently asked questions. Let me know if you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hey, more FAQ videos. We want to hear from you. I hope this wasn't too much of a drag because I know a lot of you want to see these tractors in action. These tractors doing some field work. But hey, it's got to rain first, right? I've got a 2020 crop year playlist going, so if you've missed on anything in the past on how we've gotten these tractors and these implements ready, you can check out the playlist. It is in the description as well as all the links to the videos that I talked about today. So thank you everybody for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Oh, there's my wife. You see? Calling up. That's the video, y'all. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello? <laughs> it's almost easier to use more of the back of the knife. More of the back of the knife. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yep. And kind of rock. <laughs>